Hey guys, how's it going? DUJ2 here, and welcome back to Kingdom Hearts Union Cross and picking up where we left off before. So, we're going to go through right now uh, talking about the sub slots, the PvP mode, and 7 star rarity. The reason why I chose to do this in a separate video was, as I said before, um, the first time I recorded an entire, you know, talking about the update and everything, my first video is about an hour and 20 minutes long. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll release it right now uh, someday. Um, it, it was done like at three in the well, it was like one in the morning before the update had actually come out, but we had the API notes. Um, and uh, there's a yeah, DUJ2 kind of loses it there. <laughs> it's like, you know, I, I kind of go off the deep end. So, <clears throat> um, so hopefully I'm going to be able to keep it more on point right now. And so we can just focus on what is in these update notes before we start assuming too much or just criticizing <laughs> too much. So let's go through this. Introducing sub slots. Uh, so I guess it is important to first talk about a little bit uh, continuing the version 2.6.0 updates. So 2.6.0 updates. These are the updates right here. These are the critical update notes if you need to you can go to this one and see over here like um well you can't see but over there see the blue where it says please check here for more details please check here for more details please check here for more details i think there's only three tap on that if you want to see more that's like a good like short way of getting it. but anyway introducing sub slots in version 2.6.0 we're introducing sub slots for your keyblades um, this is the 120 tier eight thing that I talked about before about sub slots. Each of your keyblades now has sub slots by sending seven star medals in these sub slots. You can increase your keyblade slots multipliers, spirit metal slot, base spirit slot uh, multiplier plus equip keyblades sub slot multiplier. How much a sub slot, a slot multiplier increase is based on the special attack bonus for the metals set in stamp sub slots. So in essence, depending on the tier, the higher the tier, the higher the, 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 the multiplier. Tap the sub slot button on the equipment screen to set metals in the sub slots. You can only set seven star metals in sub slots. Additionally, you can only set metals that match each particular sub slots attribute. Um, so actually I just realized right now This will be a very quick way for people who are willing to spend a lot of money uh, to basically just spam the current banner that are available um, and get a lot of seven stars. So if you are able to do that, congratulations. Uh, metals must be set in subplots in order, moving from slot one to slot two and so on. So you have 120 slots. You have to go in order. Good luck to everyone, and I would love to know who is the first person that can reach the full 120. Um, okay, so <laughs> introducing PvP mode. In PvP mode, you'll face uh, we're introducing PvP mode. In PvP mode, you'll face up against <clears throat> off against other players using multiple keyblades. As both you and your opponent will have infinite HP, the player that dishes out the most damage will be the winner. There will be a monthly ranking periods for PvP and the keyblades that can be used in PvP during these periods will be predetermined. While the number of times you can play PvP is limited per day, you can increase your number of tries by purchasing the weekly jewel extravaganza. So, if you buy the if you buy vip every week you can do more it, it's i i kind of feel like they shouldn't have combined this you know <clears throat> um I, I feel like they shouldn't have linked this I, I really do i really feel they shouldn't have linked this but you know what are you gonna do um mm -hmm. pvp battle rules when three keyblades are used um mm -hmm. In PvP, you and your opponent will use them one at a time in a three-round battle. The player that deals the most damage per round will win that round. The player that wins two rounds first will win the overall match. You and your opponent will alternate who gets the first attack each round. Uh, buffs and debuffs that last for multiple turns can carry over between rounds. Um, when you defeat your opponent, you and your opponent will swap ranks. Example, you're rank 1000, you defeat rank 500, you become 500, they become 1000. 
Uh, battles have a five minute time limit. Should the battle exceed the limit, it will be treated as a loss. Basically, I don't know who play here plays Tai Chi Panda. This is, this reminds me of, this completely reminds me of uh, Tai Chi Panda PvP. This is exactly what Tai Chi Panda PvP is. And if I get this right from what I've initially seen, um, even though in Tai Chi Panda PvP, well, even here we don't have our pets, you know, uh, our familiars and our pets, they don't give us certain perks in that sense. Oh, well, they do, but not the perks that I'm thinking of. Um, I do feel like because the mechanic is the same, you will be able to pull off some of the same tricks. <laughs> I would say uh, I'm actually kind of interested to try this out. Um, of course, it will depend how powerful you are, how powerful your metals are and your keyblades are. And as we know, that is directly linked to how much you are willing to spend in this game. And I'm going to leave it there. Both you and your opponent will be considered to have no attribute and therefore have no weak attributes. Exclude special attacks that ignore attributes. <laughs> I like that. You have no attributes, excluding special attacks that have no attributes. Uh, status effect skills will have PvP mode only effects and will have different variations from regular battle. Your opponent will be considered a ground enemy. So, um, for someone like me who has no ground attributes on their Dark Nah, why am I even going to bother? Uh, equipping your Keyblade, Starlight 25, Olympia 26, and Defender 30. On the PvP mode Keyblade screen, you will you can customize the order of your Keyblades and the medals in each Keyblade setup. I'm really tempted to work on my Starlight, uh, but, you know, eh, it's it's just not going to happen. Um, actually, is it here? No. Uh, I forget where it is. Anyway, uh, unlike normal, you cannot use the same metal uh, that more than once in a different setup. You'll need to strategize carefully about what order you use your Keyblade in and where you place your most powerful metals. You'll receive points for participating in PvP. So this is kind of like, I don't know if anyone's ever seen um, the 13th Warrior, where you had to change, you know, you had to change shield every single time. Uh, you will receive points even in the case of a draw or losing a battle, but you'll receive more points should you win battles instead. Points earned will be reset when each ranking period ends. A portion of daily missions have been changed to PvP-related missions. Should you exit a PvP match before completing it, your progress will not count towards completing these missions. The images, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, so. What do I want to say about PvP? Okay, this is what I'm going to say about PvE right now. I would recommend that you do not spend too much of your resources on each individual Keyblade. Uh, for example, myself, I, I hoard all my resources. You guys know that. And maybe it would be better for me to focus on certain Keyblades. But, for example, let's say Starlight. Starlight is one of the... I think Starlight is one of the Keyblades that we're using right now, isn't it? Um... Is it here? Yeah. No, Three Wishes. So, uh, Three Wishes, Sleeping Lion, and Dark Nar are the ones that we can use right now. Um, for example, Three Wishes. As much as you might want to use Three Wishes more, there is a much more powerful Keyblade out there, which is Counterpoint. If you do not have... Um, if you don't have the, the materials or, or, or you don't have a lot in the game, I would recommend you focus on the stronger Keyblades. For example, myself as well. Dark Nah. I would love to... Nuck Nah. <laughs> I would love to focus more on Nuck Nah, you know, but uh, none of my uh, reverse power uh, medals got ground. So as much as I would love to throw everything into Nuck Nah as much as I could, I'm not going to. I am going to focus on the medals. I'm going to focus on the Keyblades, sorry, the Keyblades uh, that I have potentially the best that I can do the best with. Do you know what I mean? Um, so yeah. So that's my recommendation for PvP in that sense. 
Continuing, introducing seven star rarity medals. And I, I know, I'm sorry, I know I'm not really going in depth into each one of these things, but I decided to do it this way just because, um, like I said, it, it's it, it, we can get way too into this. Uh, if you want to watch me get into this more, you really want my full opinion on these, all this, uh, come to a stream. Uh, that's where you're going to get my opinion. <laughs> Uh, you can now evolve your medals to a maximum level of rarity 7 star. Experience medals, boost medals, cost medals, evolve medals, and money medals cannot be evolved to 7 stars. <sighs> I need my 7 star moves. Evolve a medal to 7 star rarity to increase its maximum strength over 10,000 and greatly increase its damage multiplier, making the metal more powerful than ever before. Some medals, limited time medals, high score challenge medals, will gain a 3 tier upright reverse strength buff, when evolved into 7 star rarity. Example, HD Zora. HD Zora 6 star deals 8 hit for 2 turns, uh, raises PSM strength by 1, inflicts more damage the higher your HP. Its base strength is 7,356, its damage multiplier is 347 to 708. At 7 stars, it goes to damage 8 hits, deals 8 hits for 2 turns, raises upright strength by 3, PSM strength by 1, inflicts more damage the higher your HP, strength goes to 1 12th. 12,121 and its damage multiplier just explodes from seven, uh, from 751 to 11.13. Um, damage multiplier list appeal applies to a version of this metal with a maximum special attack bonus. Evolving a metal into 7 star rarity. In order to evolve a 6 star metal into a 7 star metal, you will need to fulfill the following conditions. And let me just say this before I continue. Doesn't, doesn't that fairy just have the smuggest look on their face ever? <laughs> uh, the metal must be max level and have a maximum special attack bonus and you must have the necessary blue fairy evolved metals there are eight different varieties of blue fairy star uh, evolved metal blue fairy evolved metal corresponding to special attack bonuses tiers one to eight you will need five blue fairies evolved metals corresponding with particular metals special attack bonus tier in order to evolve from six to seven star rarity you can obtain blue fairy evolved metals by using draw tickets earned from pvp mode to draw for them um okay are we gonna leave it there yes uh last thing i would say about this then is from what i've seen be very careful who you upgrade right away. Um, also, even though the rankings are... They're kind of fair in, in PvP. I do believe that this is going to... Because of the direct... Um, because of the direct correlation to the reward. This isn't like, let's say... Um, it's not... It's kind of like Colosseum, but not. Uh, in Colosseum, the rewards do not have such an impact as this one in this case we all are going to want to take our, our medals to seven stars right i mean that's just what we're going to do uh unless they also add fairy star material or sorry fairy star fairy blue fairy evolved metals in let's say avatar boards uh in direct prizes in other tiers in coliseum uh in union cross even in pulse even if they start putting Unless, unless they start putting them in pulls, like in banners where, hey, get this, you know, tier seven or uh, seven star medal and get, you know, these fairy stars, uh, sorry, fairy stars, these blue fairies, you're not going to get, you're not going to get very far. You know what I mean? So be very careful. It is definitely not only time gated, but also paywalled. In multiple different ways. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into it. Just because you know. A lot of you already know my opinion. About that in this game. And personally for me. I have relegated myself. To a much more. Uh, I'm not a casual player by far. I still play this game. A tremendous amount of the time. Um, but I do feel that. Because of how I play this game. I'm pretty much just competing with myself now. Um, and as much as I would love. To compete in PvP. I just don't have the traits on the medals that I currently have. Um, and I'm not willing to spend money to pull. So I am going to have to continue competing with myself. PvP will be very interesting, I think. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be... I'm, I'm not going to be out of it by far because I do have a lot. But, um, you know, I do feel that 
this is going to be something that we're going to have to focus on on a personal basis unless you are looking to compete or you are looking to be one of the top players in the game if so good luck to you may the odds be, well i was gonna say may the odds be forever in your favor but you know what just good luck <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to leave it there, guys. Thank you very much for watching. As always, I am DUJ2, and I will see you guys next time. See ya.